Hey, thanks for logging into YouTube, checking out my channel and this video. The kettlebell swing has a lot of moving parts to it and I didn't want to hit you with too much information at once. I didn't go in at all about height of the kettlebell, how heavy it should be, how fast it's really going to be going. That is for a later date, but right now I want to give you the fundamentals, all right? So I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram, at jcodefit, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. What's going on, everybody? It is jcodefit here, and I want to talk to you really quickly about the kettlebell swing. Now, this is a really popular exercise right now, not only for its cardio effects or its explosiveness, but the kettlebell community, the CrossFit community, and gyms across the country are really taking hold of this exercise and trying to make it a staple in their routine. Now, I've gotten a lot of attention myself and a lot of questions coming my way. What's good with the kettlebell swing? What makes it important? What makes it right? What makes it wrong? And I can't tell you without giving you a lot of prereqs on exactly how to do the kettlebell swing. It's a more advanced exercise, as I've said in the past. But for today, I wanted to go over the really important stuff and the things that make it not a kettlebell swing, okay? So four key pieces to a kettlebell swing are one, that you hip hinge. A hip hinge is quite literally hinging like a door at your hips. Now you'll notice, and you may not see this with everyone in their kettlebell swings, but if I'm going back with my hips, and that is my primary mover, that I am not squatting. A little bit of a difference, right? So that's the big one that I want to get out of the way today. The big one is the difference between the deadlift and a squat as it relates to a kettlebell swing. A deadlift, if you take the arms out of the picture, is going to look quite literally like this. Okay? You got your hips right here. Your shins are nice and tall. You got little feet right there. You got a guy up top, happy face, that you're doing a good deadlift and a good hip hinge. Your hips are moving back and forward and you give your body the ability to use this angle you just created to explode forward in a kettlebell swing. Now what the kettlebell swing is not is that same guy going backward, knees coming forward, and his shins diving forward as well. This is a great squat. Look at that. Still happy, he's got a great squat going on, but you can see that these knees are gonna take some of that load. Now the squat is not a dangerous exercise, this is not wrong. And if you move a kettlebell as you squat, it is not a bad thing to do. However, this does not take all of the force anymore. With these knees coming forward over your center of gravity, that is now going to take some of that force that otherwise all our hips were taking load of. Okay, so deadlift or hip hinge, is big one, that's number one. Make sure that you're not squatting as you do your kettlebell swing. Number two, it's a nice tight back. This is important not only for people that have past injury history, not people just with herniations, but for everyone. Because what you do repeatedly wrong will come at you in the, past, in the future, okay? Number three is explode with the hips. Now, as I referenced here, your deadlift pattern, your hip hinge pattern, your kettlebell swing is going to seem like an explosive movement because it is one. If you load your body through your hips, you are eccentrically loading the back part of your legs, called your hamstrings and your glutes. That's what we want out of the kettlebell swing. So if I load up my kettlebell swing in a good hip hinge pattern, I can explode through my hips. Step four, very important, repeat. So I'm going to do three, very quickly, didn't take a lot of time. This is not a deadlift pattern where you stop after one exercise, or I'm sorry, one breath. This is not a squat where you come down with your knees going forward. This is an explosive movement used with a kettlebell to engage your hamstrings, to engage your glutes, to help you connect to all of your posterior chain, okay? Unfortunately, and if you've looked onto my Instagram lately, unfortunately, not everyone sees the kettlebell swing as the same movement. There's nothing wrong with doing a squat with a kettlebell. There's nothing wrong with throwing a kettlebell around as you do a squat pattern. But it is not a kettlebell swing, and you have a higher likelihood of hurting yourself attempting a kettlebell swing in the wrong way, just like any other exercise that you see in the gym, okay? Again, Kettlebell swing is a hip hinge. It is explosive 
And if you do it properly, you have a nice tight back and you can do it repeatedly, quickly, without pain, okay? Unfortunately, we don't always have that happening with everyone, but I wanna nail out these four things for you so you understand where your power is coming from. As you eccentrically load your hips, you develop your load right here and you're able to power forward, right? You can explode through your hips. You do not have to start with a kettlebell swing. It is not a necessity for your exercise program. It is, again, a very advanced movement. So, your prereqs, and I will write these down just in case you're taking notes, okay? Your prereqs should be a good hip hinge. Number one, okay? If you cannot hip hinge properly without weight or under weight in a slow, controlled manner, such as a deadlift, such as a glute bridge, which is a hip hinge, even if it is not set up like your standard deadlift, it is the same deadlift pattern. If you cannot do this properly, you cannot do a kettlebell swing, okay? Number two, you need to be able to connect, activate, and accelerate through your glutes, okay? So you need a good glute connection. Yes, you're gonna see a lot of people telling you how to get a bigger butt. You're gonna see a lot of people telling you how to activate your butt. Those things are important. You need to be able to then use your glutes so that you can build your butt, so that you can become more powerful and more explosive. These two things are the absolute groundwork. Number three, you need to be able to control yourself in an explosive manner. You need to control yourself with speed. Okay? These are your prereqs. If you cannot control yourself with speed, you cannot do step number four. And as great as one kettlebell swing might look, you want to be able to do more than one at a time, regardless of the weight. Okay? So, let's recap it real quick for you. Prereq, before you even pretend like you're going to do a kettlebell swing, before you go on a nationally televised show and attempt a kettlebell swing, you want to be able to hip hinge properly. You want to be able to connect your glutes so that you can produce that force and that power that you're looking for in your kettlebell swing. You need to be able to control it with speed so that you can do these things repeatedly. This way you can take it into your four step kettlebell swing. You can take that hip hinge. You can tighten your back nice and tight so you can protect your spine. You can explode through your hips and you can do that repeatedly. Take these steps, take these prereqs, understand it all. You'll be good to go with your kettlebell swing and you'll be crushing these in no time.